Women in Art Artemisia Gentileschi One of the most famous and widely studied women in art ever to have lived was the Italian artist Artemisia Gentileschi. She was born in the late 16th century to the painter Orazio Gentileschi. Orazio was one of many artists who have been heavily influenced by the early Baroque artist Caravaggio, a painter whose distinctive qualities were his dramatic scenes and lighting. Orazio would pass this influence on to his daughter, who similarly had a penchant for dramatic scenes. Scholarly debates about Gentileschi have frequently questioned whether her tempestuous and often violent paintings were born from her traumatic early years, in which she was raped by another artist and underwent a long, painful trial to see him convicted. Regardless of whether these events had a small or large impact on the works of art she created during her career, she had an outstanding reputation during her lifetime. She would work in many cities in the Italian peninsula and abroad, and her patrons included King Philip IV of Spain and King Charles I of England. She would even be the first woman invited to join the Accademia delle Arte del Disegno in Florence. Let's take a closer look at the art of Artemisia Gentileschi. One of Artemisia Gentileschi's greatest talents as an artist was creating an intriguing element of suspense in her paintings. This element was powerfully articulated in her 1620 painting, Jail and Cicero. Like many of Gentileschi's works of art, this painting takes a scene from the Old Testament of the Bible as its subject. In the Book of Judges, an account is given of how the Canaanite military leader Sisera fought against the Israelites. Sisera was killed after the Israelites defeated him when he sought refuge with Jael, a Canaanite woman who felt compassion for the Israelites. Gentileschi depicts the climax of the story illustrating Jael raising her hammer to force a nail into an unconscious Sisera's skull. Although Sisera is clearly a physically powerful man, Jael also appears physically powerful, lifting her strong arm to deliver his death blow. She is clearly the dominant figure here, strategically executing Sisera's murder while he remains oblivious in sleep. It is possible to see Caravaggio's influence on this painting. For example, the figures here are dressed in contemporary 17th century clothing rather than historically accurate clothing, which was typical in Caravaggio's paintings. However, illustrations of physically and intellectually dominating female figures made Gentileschi's art stand out in a period when women had very few options in life and have been a distinguishing feature of her paintings. You can see Jael and Sisera at the Budapest Museum of Fine Arts in Hungary. Similar to Jael and Sisera in content and completed the very same year was Gentileschi's painting Judith Beheading Holofernes. This painting is one of the most well-known of the artist's works. It depicts a scene from the Apocrypha, which is part of the Catholic biblical canon. In this scene, the Assyrian general Holofernes enemy of the Israelites, is slain by the courageous Israelite widow Judith and her servant. Once more, Caravaggio's influence can be seen here, not only in the costumes and setting, but also through the strong light and dark contrast that play across the figures. Gentileschi's depiction was distinct from the works of Caravaggio and other contemporary artists, though, namely for the grisly nature of the scene. Judith's maid holds Holofernes down, while Judith drives a sword into the neck of Holofernes, blood spurting across them both. Like Jael and Sisera, both women appear physically powerful here, while Holofernes weakly fights back in vain. Some scholars believe that Judith is a self-portrait of Gentileschi, a belief that is supported by the fact that Gentileschi herself wielded a knife at her attacker after being raped. Even if Gentileschi did not explicitly illustrate Judith with her own face, a strong sense of rough justice that other artists of the period did not dare attempt to illustrate emanates from the painting. You can see this work of art at the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, Italy. 
A work of art that Gentileschi created later in her career was the painting Samson and Delilah, which was created in the 1630s. Although time had passed between the completion of her earlier paintings and this one, it is clear that the same theme stayed with her. Once more, she depicts a powerful female figure taking down a lethargic male. Unlike the sympathetic Jael and Judith, however, Delilah was regarded within the Christian church as a villainess, seducing and betraying the Israelite hero Samson into the hands of the enemy Philistines. As a result, the painting feels distinctly more sinister than the prior painting I discussed. Delilah and a servant consult over the unconscious Samson here, their faces partially shaded by shadow to underline their dark deeds. Delilah holds a pair of scissors in her hand, alluding to the fact that Delilah robbed Samson of his superhuman strength by cutting his hair, from which his strength was derived. In spite of the shift in tone, the painting serves as a strong testament to Gentileschi's ability to create a distinct and eye-catching scene. It most certainly holds the same element of suspense that her earlier works bore. This work of art is currently housed at the Palazzo Savala Stigliano in Naples, Italy. The subjects and scenes Artemisia Gentileschi chose to paint were painted from a uniquely female perspective, illustrating a fervent desire for righteous justice on the part of the artist. This desire can be felt in paintings she created all throughout her life. Although she lived during a time when it was extremely difficult to be a woman, her life ultimately proved to be a victory. Her unique depictions of strong, dynamic female characters made her stand out from the rest of the European art scene and ultimately helped her to rise to success. Her paintings reveal an intelligent mind and a unique talent that no other artist in history ever fully recaptured.